This video is sponsored by Warp. I've officially had this MacBook Pro for over two weeks. And as someone who's had no laptop since being laid off, it has been a godsend. Now, this is what I mean. I have to figure out how to make a living without a nine to five, which means I need to work on a lot of things. But sometimes I don't want to be stuck on my desk 10 to 15 hours a day. Since purchasing this laptop, I've been able to work from everywhere from my couch to my new cinema style chairs and the best part, my bed. This laptop is the 14 inch MacBook M3 Pro with 18 gigabytes of RAM, one terabyte hard drive, and of course in space, gray. When it comes to programming, you cannot go wrong with this. As someone who is slowly diving into the AI space, learning new tech like NLP, natural language processing, and of course you can't skip LLMs with GPT. So I figured, why not share with you how I set up this computer for programming? And later this year, I look forward to filming a day in my life with the MacBook Pro M3 as a programmer. So don't forget to hit that subscribe button and like this video. If you're anything like me, you like things clean. The first thing I do is remove any apps I don't want on my dock. The only things I tend to keep on my dock are Messenger, Telegram, Finder, and of course, Google Chrome. Now, speaking of Google Chrome, it is the very first thing I install after cleaning my desktop. To install Chrome, you need to ironically open Safari, go to the Chrome website and simply install it. And don't forget to make Chrome your default browser. Now, if you have ever worked as a developer, one of the reasons that we love Chrome is because of its dev tools. If you've ever tried debugging a CSS problem on Safari, just try it, then you'll know what I mean. Another browser that's popular among devs is Firefox. But at the end of the day, it's all about preference. Heck, if you dare, go ahead and use Microsoft Edge. After Chrome, it's time for Visual Studio Code. This isn't just any text editor. It's like my digital haven. It's perfect for everything from AI to NLPs and web development. The interface, super clean and intuitive. And the extensions, I mean, there's something for everything you can think of. Want to make your code look pretty? Install prettier. Don't want to publish your code, but still see what it looks like locally on your machine? Install Go Live. And let's not forget the Git integration. It's like the cherry on top for managing version control. It's lightweight, super customizable, and just makes life so much easier when I'm coding late in the wee hours. Now, if you build things, but also like to break things like me, then you'd probably want to break them in different environments rather than breaking your entire machine, which is why I also use Docker. Docker is crucial for development. It's like my little toolbox for creating consistent development environments. You see, Docker lets me package up my projects in these neat isolated containers. This means no more headaches about things not working when I switch environments or switch machines. In setting it up, I'll walk in the park. Just head to Docker's website, grab it for the Mac with the Apple chip, and you're good to go. It's a must have for anyone who's into building things and occasionally breaking them. The terminal is a must for every developer. I remember my first time as a dev seven years ago. When I went into the terminal and installed something like Node.js, it automatically gave me matrix vibes. It was intimidating, but it is a must and make sure to learn the basics. By the way, I have terminal tips in the link in the description below for those who want to subscribe to my newsletter. Now, one of the things that must work on my machine when using Visual Studio Code is the ability to type period space code into the terminal to open Visual Studio Code from wherever I am in my terminal. To open Visual Studio Code from the Mac OS terminal using this command, you need to follow these steps to ensure that Visual Studio Code command line interface is correctly added to your path. First, launch Visual Studio Code on your Mac. Press Command Shift P to open the command palette in VS Code. In the command palette, start typing shell command. You will see an option that says shell command install code command and path. Click on this option to execute the command. If you get a pop-up error that says e access permission denied, I'll provide a link to my notion below that will give you multiple workarounds to get this working. After completing these steps, close and reopen your terminal. This is necessary for the changes to take effect. After doing this, whenever you want to open a specific folder in VS Code, you can simply navigate to that folder in your terminal and use that command to open it. Now, 
Homebrew is like the magic wand of package management for macOS. It simplifies installing software, saving you the hassle of dealing with various installers and permissions. It's a real time saver to be honest. So all you need to do to install it is go to the brew website, copy and paste this command from the website. But make sure you follow these commands after installing brew or else brew won't work. So you need to install it on your path. After that, you now have brew and can use it to install a multitude of things you'll need in the future. For example, Node.js. Node.js is a must have for a lot of developers. It lets you use JavaScript for server-side programming, enabling you to build scalable network applications efficiently. It's great for creating fast and powerful web applications. You could go to its website to install Node.js directly, but I personally prefer to use Homebrew instead. Because then, why install Homebrew in the first place? Now, to install Node through Brew, simply type brew install node in the terminal. Now, what's great about installing Node.js is that it also automatically installs NPM for you. NPM, or Node Package Manager, comes with Node.js. It's a massive library of JavaScript tools and libraries. As a developer, you rely on NPM to manage project dependencies easily. It's crucial for modern programming, saving you time and effort in managing and using third-party code. Now we can do JavaScript projects. With Git ready, I also switched up my terminal to Warp. It's not your typical terminal, and here's why I'm so into it. For me, Warp is about making the terminal a bit more approachable. It has this feature where your commands and outputs are more organized, kind of like blocks. It's a small change, but makes a big difference in readability, especially when you're going back and forth between commands. Now, editing commands in Warp is almost intuitive. It feels like working in a text editor, which is a nice touch, especially when you're making quick edits or trying out new commands. But here's something that really stood out to me, their AI. Have you ever run into a tricky error in which you had a second pair of eyes to help you find a solution to that? Warp's AI is just like that. It offers suggestions and solutions right there in the terminal. This feature has been a real time saver making it more than just a terminal, it's more like your smart assistant for coding. And installing Warp is a breeze. You can either download it from their website or stick to Homebrew. And if using Homebrew, in the terminal, simply type brew install cask warp. I found Warp to be a neat little upgrade. It's about those small efficiencies that add up when you're coding for hours. Now, Python. Oh my God, let me tell you, was not a walk in the park for me at first a couple years ago. I remember when I tried to get Python set up, I bumped into a snag and the version just wasn't setting up right. I mean, Python is great for everything from scripting to building complex backends, but getting there, it could be a bit of a puzzle. So here's what I did. I hit up Google for a bit of troubleshooting tips. Now, it turns out using Homebrew can be one of the smoothest ways to get Python installed without a hitch. Just pop open the terminal and type brew install Python. And after installing it, make sure to type Python 3 version to make sure Python 3 is installed in the first place. Boom, there you have it. This is my journey in setting up this MacBook Pro for development. From the essential tools to the little quirks of getting everything just right, it's all about creating an environment that works for you. So take these tips, tweak them to fit your flow, and get ready to dive into coding. If there's anything I missed that you guys think I should have added, let me know in the comment section below. Anyway, thank y'all for watching. I love you all.